Today, we're going to be diving into securing infrastructure as code with the open source uh, regular policy engine, which uh, is built on top of uh, the open policy agent uh, framework from Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, today's session is going to be focused specifically on uh, securing Terraform. Uh, Regula also works for AWS CloudFormation as well. Um, with uh, infrastructure's code really kind of shifting cloud security left uh, to, to a significant degree, um, it's great to finally be able to kind of take a focus on this particular topic. So let's get over to our agenda. Uh, or actually, before we get to our agenda, um, wanted to uh, uh, give everybody a heads up. We just launched the uh, State of Cloud Security uh, 2021 survey report. Um, we partnered with uh, our friends over at Sonatype to survey 300 cloud professionals. This is DevOps engineers, cloud engineers, security, et cetera, to just get a better sense of the scope of uh, the cloud security issues that they're experiencing, um, the causes of the kind of misconfiguration, vulnerabilities, et cetera, um, and, and the, the investment in engineering resources that they're they're devoting to both infrastructure security and runtime security uh, challenges they're facing, as well as uh, you know, what they say they need to be able to do a better job. You can go ahead and download that at fugue.co slash report. And I know my colleague Josh will hit on a couple of stats from this survey that are relevant to today's topic. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And let's just get a quick look at our agenda. Um, we'll hit on some introductions and uh, go over kind of a, a, a quick overview of the software development life cycle for cloud infrastructure, which I think is kind of central to today's topic and specifically infrastructure as code security. Uh, we're gonna take an overview of the regular policy engine and uh, my colleague, uh, Kurt, my, Curtis Mizey will go through a demonstration of using regular to secure Terraform templates. Then we'll get to your Q and A um, and just as a reminder, we have a number of cloud security masterclass sessions on demand uh, at fugue.co slash masterclass. And now I'll introduce to you my two colleagues who are going to kind of take us into a deep dive on infrastructure's code security with Regula. Uh, uh, the, the demo will be uh, VP of, of security here at Fugue, Curtis Mizey. But first, let's get to uh, my co-founder. CEO and CTO of Fugue, Josh Stella. Josh, take it away. Thank you, Drew. And <clears throat> I'm really excited to have Curtis here for this one. Uh, Curtis uh, knows all things Fugue, all things OPA and Rego. And uh, I think uh, this is gonna be a really great session. So yeah, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna do a few things. One, we, we do this survey every year. And I, uh, it, it gets a, a, a ton of attention because it, we're, what we're doing in this survey is really trying to educate ourselves, and then we share it with everyone, of course, on really the state of security in the cloud world and how people are viewing it and what they're doing about it. Um, it is, uh, has, is a ton of great information. We survey 300 organizations that are operating at scale on the cloud, um, and uh, I'll be walking through some of... Oops, bump my mic, uh, some of the uh, results of that survey uh, at a high level before Curtis really takes us uh, into some, some real code and, and real use of uh, uh, Regula. Uh, Regula is Fugue's open source project that implements open policy agent for infrastructure as code. And so uh, we're gonna be, uh, Curtis is gonna be showing you a lot of that in a demonstration. Uh, it says Q&A at the end, please ask questions all the way through. These things are much more fun. They're much better when they're more interactive. Why we're we here to talk about this, uh, right? Cloud engineers could be moving faster and creating more value, but only if they're building stuff in cloud that doesn't break uh, security rules, that doesn't cause vulnerabilities, okay? Um, so, so that's a lot of the focus today is going to be on how to combine those things, how to spend your time uh, building new capabilities uh, without 
uh, uh, doing, uh, making dangerous mistakes that, 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 you know, put you in, uh, in the news where no one wants to be and for the wrong reasons. Okay. Um, what this really means is that security is often the rate limiting factor for how teams, how fast teams can go in the cloud. All right. Some stats from our survey, uh, causes and challenges. Um, I think that the, the, the big number here, right, is 45. That's the largest number on here. And, and this is highly relevant to what we're going to talk about today, which is using different policy frameworks at different stages of the software development life cycle. So it, it, with, in a lot of environments, you know, if you're using a certain vendors, pretty much this, this is not a vendor pitch. We're talking about a problem here. But our approach is that you should have the same policy framework all the way through the SDLC. So we're going to show you how you can use OPA today on infrastructure as code, but that same policy framework can then be used, expressed in Rego from OPA, uh, in pre-deployment and in monitoring post-deployment. And I thought it was really interesting that the biggest number here, 45% uh, of respondents said that having having to do this in multiple ways, you know, maybe it's a uh, uh, check off for infrastructure as code and then uh, config, AWS config, different policy as code. That is the problem they're talking about there. All right, um, you know, almost a quarter of people said team negligence. I always, uh, and not enough expertise on teams, same, same thing, 27% lack of policy awareness. Um, there is a, what's the right way to put this? There's a kind of a blame the victim thing here in a way that's going on in my opinion, in that when you look at, for example, NIST 800-53, or even if you just are, I say, even if you just, or if you look at how hackers are breaching cloud environments, uh, this is kind of like saying, okay, all developers should have master's degrees in this very specific topic. Of, of cloud security. And that's just not realistic. And in the case of compliance frameworks, the serious ones, they're like phone books. So uh, this is not a human solvable problem. Uh, humans are terrible at keeping big lists of information in their heads. We, we stink at that. We're really good at being intuitive and connecting dots and being inventive. We're really bad at remembering long lists. And so when I hear team negligence, it rubs me a little the wrong way. You know, we, what we should be doing is giving people tools like we're gonna demonstrate today with Open Policy Agent and Regular. Um, alert fatigue, uh, you know, that's another tool problem, right? If you're getting alert fatigue, your tools aren't doing what they should be doing. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll move on here. So. I was really happy with this result. You know, it's funny, in the world we live in, which is cloud security and compliance, uh, kind of in that order, um, being happy is often, often somewhat grim uh, because what I'm happy about here is that the number one uh, service, when we asked you know, uh, how many cloud vulnerabilities to our, to our uh, survey respondents uh, are due to what kind of misconfigurations and for the first time in, I think, three, four years we've been doing this, uh, IAM is on the top. And it should be on the top. IAM is a component. IAM misconfiguration and exploitation is a component of almost all cloud hacks. Uh, it, it isn't usually alone responsible for the cloud hacks, but, um, but it's almost always there. So that coming to the top of the list, I thought was great. Uh, security group or firewall rules next. And then uh, object storage access policies. You know, if you were to read the press, you would think public S3 buckets were how everyone got hacked. And it's almost never true. It's almost always a simplific oversimplification. So what we're going to show you today is, is how you can catch a lot of this stuff before you even build it. You can check your Terraform templates. We're going to show you Terraform today. We also do cloud formation and regular. It's, uh, you know, Curtis will show you where it is up on, uh, on GitHub. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on this one. Uh, people are experiencing misconfigurations daily. I would, again, attribute that to, to tool failure. 
Um, and really what we need is this cloud security that goes through the entire SDLC, through the entire software development life cycle. And what that means is over on the left in development, we're talking about IAC, we're talking about infrastructure as code. Okay, oh, but, but just as important is ma making it happen in the runtime too. So we're gonna be talking about IAC today, but it's really important. Remember that 45% saying uh, uh, not having sync between the, the, the phases of the SDLC was the biggest problem. Well, what that means is you need to have the same policies we're gonna show you with IAC also apply to the runtime. And of course, that is something that, that um, we believe passionately and something we do. So uh, IAC security matters because, you know, catching vulnerabilities before they're public reduces risk is, 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 a, is a kind way to say that. Um, yeah, small misconfigurations can become large attack surfaces. They can become large attack surfaces or they might be small attack surfaces with big blast radius. Okay, and those are different. Um, but uh, both are true of these kinds of misconfigurations, especially when you're talking about a single IAC template might be used to produce many, many instances of, of infrastructure, right? You, you might run it dozens or hundreds of times. And so if there's an error, you're propagating those dozens or hundreds of times. Of course, it's cheaper, faster, easier to fix stuff earlier before it gets deployed. And some of these things can't be fixed later. You know, if you're talking about, you know, encrypting volumes or, or databases, they have to be encrypted at instantiation, at creation time, not, you can't go back and, and turn that on. In some cases you can, but in many you can't. And so this leads you to being able to ship faster and uh, frequently. So uh, the regular policy engine, it's an open source policy engine um, uh, for checking IAC, uh, for security and compliance using open policy agent, okay? So Open Policy Agent, the, the good folks at Styra who are good friends of ours, uh, Open Policy Agent was, is, was mostly used before Fugue picked it up for infrastructure as code purposes and, and cloud security, it is mostly used for um, uh, transaction authentication in things like Kubernetes clusters. Uh, but what we've done with, with, uh, with Regula is really build tooling around OPA, Open Policy Agent, for uh, for cloud security. And in the open source form, we have CIS benchmark policies out there. It's super easy to develop and test rules. We've got testing tooling built into this so you can actually uh, write real code and test real code. That's a nice thing. Uh, and it supports simple and multiple resource checks. A lot of things don't uh, that are in this kind of space. So, and, and this is all uh, it integrates with CI, CD, and testing frameworks. Uh, we have conf test integration out of the box. And this is all uh, purely open source. Of course, as a commercial software vendor, uh, everything you're building in Regula can also be used in the commercial product as well. But what we're talking about today is, is the open source, okay? All right. Uh, I'm going to hand the con over to Curtis. I will jump in. Yeah, hey everybody. I am gonna be touching on and taking you through six different topics with respect to Terraform security. Um, so kind of I'll, I'll introduce each one and then each one we have some example code and some commands to actually try out so you can see all this in action. And like Josh said before, if you have questions or comments along the way, don't be afraid to chime in. Um, this is an, a public GitHub repo that we'll be sharing with you too. So afterwards, if you want to refer to these examples in this information, you'll have access to that. All right. So I'm not going to touch on all the topics right off, out of the gate. So I'll just jump into the first one. But like uh, Josh mentioned, Regula, which is Fugue's open source policy engine for Terraform and other IAC templates, um, it uses the Rego language. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about that at first. Um, it may be new to many of you. So from the OPA documentation, they talk about Rego being a high level declarative language 
purpose built for expressing policies over complex hierarchical data structures. So that's pretty open ended, which is, I think, one of the things we want to convey in this talk. OPA is a really powerful tool, and Rego is a powerful language, but we can actually layer a, a lot on top of that to make it much more easy to use with infrastructure as code. But first, a little bit more about Rego. Often you're dealing with an input, and that's in the form of JSON documents commonly. This can really be whatever JSON object you want, and, and you can run OPA for policy against it. So here's an example policy. So this is Rego code that defines an allow policy, and we can evaluate that against any input document. So input in this case can refer to this JSON object for an, as an example. And so say here we're you know, writing a policy just as an example that is meant to be true if the user is an admin user. And so we check input.role, which refers to the role attribute in the JSON object. And if that's admin, the policy is true. And so you can imagine that's like an authorization mechanism, for example, where we're going to allow an action if the user is an admin only. So that's the quick introduction of Rego with input documents and policy. Um, and one of the things I should uh, elaborate on slightly more is that Rego is really a query language. And what it, what it allows us to do is query our JSON input for information and evaluate conditionals against that. And, and by query language, I really mean here, you know, it, it's a mechanism for information retrieval. And it, it's similar in a lot of ways to like SQL, for example, which about everybody's familiar with. Um, you know, we're, we're asking for information with certain conditions. Here's, a, here's an example in practice, um, just expanding on what we saw before. So allow would pass for Curtis here and allow would fail for Josh because he does not have the admin role. So let me switch screens and I'll show you that in action really quick. And as you'll see this, everything we do in regular kind of builds on top of some of these basic concepts. And, and by the way, that's wise, never give a CEO admin to anything. True, true, true. All right. So I'm inside that GitHub repo here in VS Code. Uh, we've got a directory in here for each of the six topics we're going to touch on. So I'm going to dive into those and you can follow along. So here's where we were. So we're going to use the OPA command line tool. Oops. Sorry about that. We're going to use the OPA command line tool to run that rego code and see how that allow policy actually works. All right. So we've got an example.rego file in here. We're going to do OPA run example.rego. That drops us into the OPA command line REPL. We can import that rego code and then evaluate our policy. So we're going to check whether for Curtis, we're allowed. And that is allowed. But for Josh, it is not. So pretty simple. We're evaluating that rego policy with different inputs and seeing what the result is. So that's, again, just a, a quick example of evaluating rego against JSON input documents. All right. Next up, our second topic is going to be on how does this relate to Terraform and how can we use Rego with Terraform? Um, I'm going to assume a certain level of familiarity with Terraform here. So, you know, if this is totally foreign looking to you, then I'm sorry about that. But we're going to assume you've seen some Terraform HCL code and maybe know what Terraform plan is. 
And we're going to talk about how Rego can be used for both of those. All right, so Terraform source code, the syntax is called HCL. Oof, I got to stop clicking on that. Sorry about that. The source code is called HCL. Um, this is an example that's defining two resources, AWS IAM users and IAM access keys in this case. And so we want to be able to apply policy to, to check that for, you know, for misconfigurations, for security issues. And so how are we going to do that with Rego? I'll give you an idea. So first off, we need to convert the HCL to JSON, right? Because we know Rego processes JSON input documents. Um, there's a few different ways to do that. Regula does provide this kind of built in, and I'll show you that. So we can say Regula show input and pass it the path to an HCL file, and we'll get out a JSON representation of that HCL. And then in this example command, we're just using the JQ command, which processes JSON to extract a certain part of that. The end result is you end up with this JSON representation of the HCL code. So it should look pretty similar in many ways. Um, two resources again. Um, but instead of an HCL, we now have it in JSON, which means we can query it with Rego. And I will show you that briefly. So if we go into our second topic folder, we can do regular show input example.tf. We get that JSON. And then, you know, piping it through JQ, you can extract certain parts of that. Um, and then work with it in Rego from there. So All Curtis, right. yep. you talked about HCL and also plans. <clears throat> what, are, what are some of the reasons you might check HCL and you might check plans or you might do both? Yep. The reason to check HCL or one of the benefits there is HCL is typically what's actually committed in your Git repos. It's readily available and you can do it really early. So when you're developing Terraform templates, you got that HCL right there in front of you. You can run regular or any other policy against it and get results right away, kind of as part of your development workflow. Plans, you don't do a Terraform plan until you're you know, getting ready to actually deploy the templates. So it's a bit later in the process. And that means you know the feedback's a little bit later, but the feedback's also a little bit like higher resolution, if you will, in that once you have a Terraform plan, there's actually a lot more information available. And so you can get some higher fidelity results that way too. So both are very valid and valuable. Got it. And, and so if you're if you're if the HCL is earlier and faster, we're gonna anything we catch there is obviously of benefit to, to catch as soon as possible, but the plan is still pre-deployment. So if, if you catch like, you know, I don't know, 60% of the errors at HCL and another 20% at plan, it, it might make sense to do both in part of your, your pipeline, right? Absolutely. Yep. And one of the ways that I like to kind of make use of both of those is by having a pre-commit hook in Git where you can run checks against the HCL code then. So that gets you the early feedback. And then in your CI CD pipeline, you can do the checks against your plan. And so, yeah, you get the best of both. Got it. And, well, I, I feel like I might be diverting you from your flow here. So I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, shut up. Not at all. That's a good lead on. Um, so to finish off just a quick example on HCL, what I wanted to show is that it's possible to run Rego directly against that JSON. It's just a little bit more complicated. And that's what Regula, our project, is going to help with, is to simplify some of this. But just as a quick example, we've got this JSON with our two resources. Here's a similar policy to what we wrote in the last topic. We're going to look at all documents in the input. This is an interesting Rego syntax that basically looks at all elements in this set. So our input here is a set of documents. So we're gonna look at each one. For all of them that are type AWS IAM user, we're gonna do this assertion and make sure that every user has tags defined. That's the point of this policy. 
So that's fairly straightforward. Um, and you can see here that this user, Joe, they do have tags defined, and so it would pass this policy. So similarly, uh, you can do many of these same things with Terraform plans. And so like we talked about, you make a plan when you're about to actually apply your Terraform changes to running infrastructure. So the plan says what you're going to create, modify, and delete. When you run Terraform plan, you can you know, save it to a plan file. And then some of you may know that you can actually do this Terraform show command to render a JSON version of it to a file. And so you can do the same type of rego evaluation against that plan file. And that is, a, it's a great idea and very valuable. But if we look at one of these plan files, I'll open it here. It's quite complicated, actually. And it's not just the, you know, the simple resource configuration you saw in the HCL. There's a lot more structure to this and a lot to learn here. And so this is another area where Regula helps a lot. We kind of simplify all this and make it so that you can actually write the same exact policy in Regula, the same rule, and have it work exactly the same for Terraform plans in HCL code, which is a really key thing you get with Regula. All right. So, so, so that's interesting. That that. We're, 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 we're operating on different data structures, but the same queries apply. Yep. How, how, is, that, how is that done, Curtis? It's the same, in, well, sorry, it's different input data structures, as in the plan JSON is significantly different than the HCL JSON. But one of the things Regula provides is what's called a resource view. And that basically creates a uniform API across both HCL and Terraform plans. And it's against that API that we'll write our rules. Got it, got it, thank you. And I, you know, I know from, uh, without Regula, a, a, a lot of the value in Regula from my perspective is it, it really simplifies and abstracts some stuff that uh, is a real pain. And if you're, if you're going kind of out of the box OPA, you're going to be having to traverse these file structures in really, uh, you know, very detailed ways. But uh, with Rego, a lot you can call things in a much more intuitive way. Uh, and by the way, that that stuff is mostly built. And tell me if I'm wrong here, Curtis. But in in Rego itself, that we're we're shipping Rego libraries that perform a lot of these functions. So you can see the source code. Yep, absolutely. You got it. Um, and I'll, I'll dig into more of that right now. So here's a number of ways that Regula is kind of simplifying your job as somebody that's trying to write rules or policy against Terraform. This is what you're getting with Regula on top of what is provided by Rego and OPA. So first off, like we just talked about, we need like a consistent API for our rules. Um, with Rego by itself, you know, there's a hundred or infinite ways really to write the code. We're providing a consistent API here. There is a standard way with Regula to declare kind of metadata about your rules. And an easy example is rule severity. So critical versus medium versus low severity issues. Quick way to look up resources by type. We want our policies to work for both HCL and for Terraform plans. We don't want to understand all the details of Terraform plan JSON, which we saw is pretty complicated. And then this could be an, you know, an easy one to miss or underestimate. Regular provides a handful of different standardized output formats that are easy to digest in other tools. Um, processing Terraform modules together, there's some some things to consider there. And then taking the kind of same policy across the SDLC one step further, we want the same policy not just for HCL code and Terraform plans, but actually you can apply the same rules against runtime resources as well. And that's something you can get with Fugue. So, so, so that's, that's interesting. When we say runtime resources, does that mean 
the stuff that uh, is the, the, the resources that are built as a result of Terraform having run, or is it also uh, things that have resources that are out there, whether or not they were built with Terraform? Right. Yeah, good question. So um, with Fugue in our SaaS platform, you can scan your cloud resources and get a runtime representation of them as JSON formatted objects. And that's regardless of what IAC tools you use to create them or even if you created them manually. Um, so you could run this same rule um, against IAC templates, but also potentially against runtime resources in the cloud that were provisioned manually. Got it. And I, I wanted to point that out because it gets back to that 45% saying that not having one way to do that, both of those is, is like a fundamental problem. And whether or not you choose uh, to use Fugue uh, as a commercial product, um, with, with Regula and OPA, we, we're at least showing that, that this is feasible to do. I mean, we do it in our product, um, uh, but uh, it is at least a feasible approach to solve that number one problem with misconfigurations. So here's the Rego code um, that you could use with Regula. Um, we've touched on some aspects of this already, like some metadata that describes what the rule is. This is how we say what resource type this rule is going to apply to, AWS IAM users. And we're going to say, by default, don't allow any users. And we're only going to allow users if they have tags defined and they define a department within those tags. And so we can try this out real quick. Go into the directory here. And in this directory, I've got an example Terraform file. So we've got a user Joe here. We've got our Rego rule. And we can use regular to run it. So what you're seeing here is when you run regular with regular run in a directory, if by default look it by default looks for any IAC template in that directory or any subdirectory. And so in this case, it's finding the .tf file here and running our example rego rule against it. The dash u, I'll take just a moment to describe. This is saying, don't use the regular built-in rules, only use the user provided rules. And so that's our example rego here in a bit. And I'll, I'll explain the regular built-in rules shortly. And like I mentioned, you, there's a few different output formats. That's just the default human readable one. You can opt for a table format or JSON output. The table format's a little hard to read because I've got my font size blown up. But um, the JSON one's a little bit better to interpret here. So this is a regular outputs this JSON report. And it, a report consists of a number of rule results. And that declares that the IAM user Joe was in fact passing. It was in compliance with that rule. And then it provides a bunch of summary information too about what Terraform templates were evaluated and how many total pass and fail results there were. So, you know, you can see this is really quick. Um, this is a way to take, you know, a very small amount of code and evaluate any number of IAM users in your HCL templates. Yeah, you know, you're showing uh, evaluation of <clears throat> IAM users. Uh, what about the contents of IAM policies? Is yep. that something that's feasible? It is, and I may actually have an example of that in one of the later topics, but the gist of it is, um, you know, any attribute you're defining on a Terraform resource you have access to in Regula, and that includes the IAM policies, which are either often defined inline um, or in a separate resource, and a number of the built-in Regula rules work with those, and you can write your own too. Next up, 
I was going to dive into Git pre-commit hooks and how you can use those to check IAC really early in your developer workflows. Uh, so we are about halfway through the agenda here. Let's see. So Git pre-commit hooks, um, not everybody knows about these, even if you're a developer. Um, they're a way to run some scripts in advance or as part of a commit command in Git. So as you're about to you know, finalize your changes, you can run some scripting to do some sanity checks against your change files and look for any issues. And so what this can do when you combine it you know, with IAC and policy, you can make developer commits fail out with information telling them how to fix misconfigurations before they actually commit them to their code base, which is really handy. And you know, this is one of the earliest ways you can get feedback to developers, even before you know, a CI CD pipeline will run. So I'm going to walk you through the gist of how to do that. And it's actually really surprisingly easy. Um, there's a couple different ways to install this pre-commit project. Um, I've got a link here to the project if you want to check it out. You can pip install it, you can brew install it, um, either way. And then in your Git repository, you add this YAML file and you define any number of hooks in here. And we're making just a local hook, which runs a simple regular command, really super straightforward. And the idea again is when I run git commit, it's going to run regular run against any of the change files and check them for issues. So it's very, very easy to set this up. There's the one final step of like, once you've made the YAML file, you run pre commit install, and then you're off to the races. So um, let's just take a look at what I have there. It's pretty much what you just saw. I'm using regular's waivers functionality to, to ignore certain results. Um, but we'll go in here and I will show you this in action. So I've got an example Terraform file in here. And I've got an AWS IAM role in here. And say I'm a developer that really doesn't know much about assume role policies. And if you're familiar with AWS and IAM, you might know that assume role policies let you actually assume a role in a different AWS account even and assume those permissions. So this is you know, a, a feature that can be used securely if done right. Um, and Fugue, the product, even uses it in a secure way. But you really need to be careful. And so say this developer was not very careful and they mistakenly or unknowingly added an AWS star principle, which basically lets anybody out there assume this role, which is a very bad thing to do, but maybe they don't know better. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and try to commit that change. And you know, maybe depending on your CID, CI CD setup, this could automatically deploy out depending on, on your setup. So I'm gonna say modify I am role because I can't get it to work without this. Go ahead and try to commit that. Regular ran thanks to that pre-commit hook and it failed and it failed out and gave you information about why. And that one change actually triggered two different regular rules that check for different IAM issues. So the first one, which is a label high severity is IAM roles used for trust relationships should have MFA or external IDs defined. Um, external IDs is a key feature here that helps make this secure. And then the second failure is the trust policy allows all principles, which is the star here to assume the role. So both of these are very bad issues and regular correctly caught them and stopped the commit from working. And so we back that check out now and regular will run without issue. So that's a quick glance at how, you know, you can really easily add these pre-commit hooks to any of your 
any of your Git repositories that have IAC templates and get a lot of feedback really early in the process. Let's see here. Um, one of the nice features too, is you can say pre-commit run against all files and you'll get results for everything in the repo. Cool. All right. And we'll keep you know, there's a, cool, there's a cool side effect of that too, <clears throat> which is, you know, going back to the survey, people saying, you know, people not being not conscientious enough or not being aware of what the security policies are. Well, how do engineers and developers work? We work by uh, trying things until we get them right. In many cases, you know, compilers tell you if you're if you're making an error, uh, debuggers tell you if you're making an error, this kind of feedback is actually uh, catching errors, but it's also teaching people along the way what is the, the correct thing, what's the acceptable thing. And I think that that feedback loop um, is highly meritorious in that your engineers are unlikely to keep making those errors as they learn them. Yeah, absolutely. And there are so many resource types and so many potential issues that, yeah, giving them that like continuous feedback, yeah, goes a long way. All right, I got a little bit more to cover, running out of time here. So we've got built-in regular rules. I wanted to talk about this a bit. So, you know, you saw a couple examples of running a rule that we wrote ourselves. So a custom rule, if you will. Regular comes with hundreds built in um, and they're built in in a way that takes, you know, no effort from you to make use of. So. Here's instructions to run all rules against all your IAC templates. We tried to make this as simple as humanly possible. You run regular run, and that's what it does by default. So if you go into any of your Git repositories after installing regular, um, a repository that has Terraform HCL in it, for example, run that command, and you get feedback um, in the right way. That runs hundreds of rules for you automatically. Um, and I just wanted to call out a few of the really important ones. There are many important ones, but like here's a few examples across both AWS and Azure. These are ones that are built in. Checking for publicly readable S3 buckets, checking for IAM roles with good trust relationships. You just saw that one in action. MySQL databases should not permit access from any address or all addresses. Azure storage account should deny access from all networks by default. Google compute instances should not use the default service account with full access to all cloud APIs. So this is just like a small sample of what's built into the regular command. And you can go to the regular documentation. Um, I think this will take me to a different window. I'll switch to that real quickly. On the regular docs page, there's a rules listing and you can get kind of the, the whole set that we currently support. So there's hundreds in here for AWS, Azure, and Google. And just to touch on rule categories real quickly, like these are all things where your developers need feedback on these different types of items. So encryption, secure login, credential management, public access, um, and you can read the rest of the list. So regular helps with, with all these different categories of issues that can be present in your Terraform templates. All right. And then last up, I was just gonna share a little bit more information about different ways you can add IAC checks to like CI CD workflows and so on. Um, we have a couple different options with Regula, um, and we try to make a few of them, you know, really easy for you to start with. Uh, if you're a Docker user, this one is actually really handy because you don't even need to install Regula to use this. Just by having Docker installed, you can Docker run the Regula image on your workspace here and get the results out. So just, you know, so you can see that in action really quick. Um, without even having regular installed. You can use that Docker command to mount your current directory into a workspace on the Docker container. 
And then Regula will look for all the Terraform HCL that it finds there. So that's super easy. You can do that in CI CD too. Um, and then here's an example which we use in Circle CI um, to download the latest Regula off of GitHub and make it available to any job in Circle CI. Basically, we just curl the, the binary asset off of the GitHub page. And then uh, Regula has a whole set of built-in help commands, which you can see with Regula-H, so you can learn about more of this. Um, Josh touched on this earlier, but we have a bunch of built-in testing capabilities, because and we really consider testing a, like a, a first-class need when you're developing policies for your team. Because obviously, if you have false positives, false negatives, that's going to make the team tune out on the results. Um, so we have a, a whole set of functionality devoted to making writing unit tests for your rules easy. And, and, that, and that actually kind of comes back to uh, alert fatigue. I mean, the way that's put in the survey, right, is, is around the notion of alerting and runtime. But, uh, you know, false negatives, false positives, particularly false positives, are uh, a, a real good way to uh, get people to ignore uh, the things that are meaningful. And so this, uh, you know, actually, we uh, were just working with uh, the head of security at a big, uh, you know, global uh, uh, web company, you know, SaaS company. And that ability to write tests of policies was the thing that made him em embrace regular because it's it's actually hard to do without that without that um, that tooling. Yep, and the regular write test inputs command it's it's pretty neat. That will take a Terraform HCL file and auto generate some unit test files for you, so it converts it to JSON and some other things. So it makes it quite easy. Okay, well, thanks, Curtis. I'm I'm. Uh, the uh, the my 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 conscience is telling me uh, that uh, we need to go to wrap up, so yep. I'm going to do that. And thank you so much for walking us through that. Oh, by the way, this URL uh, here on the on the slide I'm showing down at the bottom, that's where you can get. Uh, that's the GitHub repo for everything Curtis was just showing you. So all the code examples he had and documents that he wrote. You can you can go to that URL and uh, and and download that. Okay, we, uh, maybe we can paste that in the uh, in the chat. If that's possible, so it's easy for people. Yeah, I, I will do that. Could do I that. will do that while Josh is wrapping. Awesome. Up. Thanks, Curtis. Awesome. Yeah. So so yeah, we uh, we're kind of back to this slide about uh, uh, cloud security across the SDLC. What we were just showing you is really cloud security during development, which is uh, the right place to begin, certainly on, um, on cloud security. But it is equally important that you do this in, in the runtime as well. So uh, you might say, well, if I'm catching everything pre-deployment, then the runtime's okay. That's not usually true um, for a number of reasons. One is that there are some things you cannot catch until uh, the uh, the Terraform code in this case is actually run uh, because these APIs have side effects and there are some parts of infrastructure that are not handled by infrastructure as code, but also the assets, the resources that are produced by infrastructure as code are often uh, mutated, uh, changed uh, through other mechanisms than infrastructure as code. And many times I've had companies tell me, both when I was at AWS and, and here at Fugue, we do everything through infrastructure as code. And I, I, it is never true, it is never true. If you think you're doing everything through infrastructure as code, somebody's not telling you everything that's going on because it's just, it's not, I've never seen a case of it. it, it if, you, if you are doing that, I wanna talk to you. If, you. if you're really pulling that off, I would love to find out how. But um, that's why you need to check up front, and then you need to continue to check over time. All right, uh, Drew, why don't I why don't I turn it back over to you? Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Curtis. Awesome deep dive into regular and infrastructure's code security. Uh, got a couple of 
resources up here. Uh, Regula.dev is where is is kind of the 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 non GitHub sort of primary site for Regula. You can find all of our documentation, uh, help uh, steps to to get started and and use Regula. Um, obviously, Regula is available on GitHub at uh, github.com slash fugue slash regular. We're also on Docker Hub. Uh, uh, you can find it there as well. And uh, definitely recommend checking out Open Policy Agent if you're not familiar with it. It is an awesome open standard for policy as code. I think it's probably um, you know the, the, the number one sort of policy as code standard at this point, uh, very popular in the Kubernetes community. And as Josh said, you know we, we took a look at it and said, this is really ideal for the cloud infrastructure security use case that, that, that we've developed Regula on. So uh, big fans of Open Policy Agent. Uh, and then a, a little shameless plug here for Fugue. Um, again, with Fugue, you can use the same policies that you're using with Regula to check your cloud infrastructure runtime environment, uh, save yourself a lot of time trying to reconcile you know, otherwise spent reconciling policies using different tools, different policy frameworks. Better to just use one everywhere. Um, so, so that's what you get with Regula and Fugue. And we have a Fugue guarantee within 15 minutes of using Fugue, pointing it at your AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud environment. We're going to give you a full vi interactive visualization of your cloud environment, including uh, any security uh, misconfiguration vulnerabilities, compliance violations, et cetera. It's really useful to kind of visualize issues that you may have missed before, such as orphaned resources or just things that, that just don't quite look right. Um, nothing like seeing things in a, in a visual way to help you there. Um, give you uh, detailed remediation guidance to help you bring your cloud into compliance and we'll guarantee that you'll do that in eight weeks or less. Uh, so if, if you're interested in getting uh, up and running with Fugue or exploring it, we'd love to talk to you. You can reach out to us at sales at fugue.co. Um, and again, don't forget to check out our other masterclass uh, content as well as the, uh, the state of cloud security report at fugue.co slash report. So with that, uh, I will uh, we'll close it out. Thanks again, everybody. We really appreciate you spending some time with us today.